Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Tutorials. Today, we want to continue our series on the IFRS and we want to look at IAS 20, what we normally call government grants or grants. But then the full name of the standard is Accounting for Government Grants and the Disclosures of Government Assistance. Accounting for Government Grants and the Disclosure of Government Assistance. I always want to write the name of this standard in full and I always want to mention it in full no matter how long it takes because I believe that the name is a key to understanding of the standard in itself. The name looks very long but it's a very simple standard. Now we usually call it government grant. Now the name is accounting for government grant and the disclosure of government assistance. So we see two key words here. We see government grant and then we see government assistance. Now, what is more important is that there is a different word, uh, I, what we do, there is a different verb attached to the grants. We account for the grants, but when it comes to the assistance, we disclose. And that is a very key thing that we need to understand, that we account for grants and then we disclose assistance. And so that is the, how we even begin it. That accounting for government grants means that when it's a grant, you account for but when it's an assistance, what you do is that you only disclose at the end of a financial statement. Okay, so we begin by trying to understand some of the key terms in the standard. And the first one I want to talk about is government. Okay, so the government. Now, government in this standard is not our normal definition of government that we know. That the, the author, well, it's still the body that is in charge for the ruling or running of the nation. But that is not the only scope of the government that we are talking about here. In this standard, government refers to the government of the nation itself. Then also, the government agencies as well, like the JRA, Ghana Revenue Authority, and any other tax agency in any other country. Then also, local uh, establishments and also international authorities as well. And so, government in this standard it's not limited only to the government of the people. All right, so that is what the standard means by government. And then when we also talk about government, let me first begin with government assistance. And then I'll come to government grants. So now that we know that the government is not limited only to the state government, but other international authorities and bodies are also part of the government in the scope of this standard. And it means that when we talk about government assistance, now the government assistance is any action of government, any action of government that is aimed at bringing, uh, aim, aimed at giving an economic benefit to the institution. We are looking at ourselves uh, as a business, and then we are accounting for the grants that we have received. And so the assistance is any action of government that is to bring economic benefit to the organization. We call it an assistance. So once government does anything, and I, I use the word action because it could be passive or not. So once it's an action that they have done or whatever they have, a law that they have passed, anything that they have done, that is supposed to bring the institution an economic benefit. We call it government assistance. Now when it comes to a grant, now, this is how we look at a grant and assistance. A grant is an assistance which can be quantified in terms of monetary terms. It has a money value and it involves a transfer of resources from the government to the organization. Then we call it a grant. So when government does anything, that will give economic benefit to the organization. But there was not or it didn't involve any physical transfer of resources like giving the organization some cash or some assets or some, then it means that that action could only be called an assistance. Now, of course, a grant also falls into the category of an assistance. So I want to say that all grants are assistance, but it's not every assistance that is a grant. And so I can draw a bigger circle for assistance and then a grant will be a subset of an assistance. Now, we only call it a grant when it involves a transfer of resources and it has a value placed on it. Then we call it a grant. Other than that, any action of government that will bring economic 
benefit to any organization. It's just called the government assistance. And so if government decides to uh, give a tax holiday to a particular group of uh, organizations in an industry, for example, there was no transfer of physical resources from government to the institution. And so that, that tax holiday that has been given to the organization will be called an assistance in this case. But when it involves a transfer, physical transfer of resources, like government giving um, money to the organization in order to aid them either to buy an asset or establish a product or do a research, then we call that a government grant because that one involves a transfer of resources. So I'm sure we have been able to differentiate between a grant and an assistance. And that is why I told you from the beginning that the topic itself is self-explanatory. Accounting for government grants and the disclosure of government assistance. We account for the grant because it has monetary value, it involves a transfer of resources and we, we can account for it. But usually assistance does not carry any physical monetary value or any physical resources or there is no monetary value attached to that of assistance. And so we cannot account for it because in accounting we see we record only events that are quantified in terms of money. And since most assistance are just laws that will protect us, that are not quantified in terms of money, we cannot account for them. So the only thing we do is that we only disclose them after the financial statement. And so that is why we say we account for grants and we disclose assistance. Okay. So having understood this, then let us focus more on the grants. We have understood that a grant is a subset of an assistance. And so let us understand the grants into detail. All right. Okay, so when we say grants, now grants, there are two main types of grants. Government grants could be um, classified into two, under two main headings. And then we have um, grants that are related to assets and then grants that are related to income. So I will say one, grants relating to assets. And then grants relating to income. These are the two main uh, broad classification of grants that we can have. Now, what are grants related to assets? Grants relating to assets are those grants which, when given by the government, it is specifically given for the construction of an asset or acquisition of a non-current asset. That is basically grants related to assets. Now, before I, I go, let, let me not forget to say that grants are given under specific, uh, based on specific requirements. You know, normally there is a laid down um, rule or there are some conditions that must be met. Let me say the conditions must be met before grants are given out. So the government cannot just give out a grant. Most of the time there are conditions attached. For example, a government can decide to give grants to a particular uh, foreign company in this nation so that the purpose of the grant is that the, 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 the condition, sorry, the condition attached to the grant is that they should maybe employ 50% of their employees should be from this country so that it will help boost employment levels in the country. So there are lots of conditions that are attached to grants. Now grants related to assets are given so that the organizations that are benefiting from the grant will use those grants to establish or acquire an asset or construct a non-current asset or an item of property, plant and equipment that will aid them in their business. Now, grants relating to income could have been defined using so many terms that are related to income, but surprisingly, the standard says that grants related to income are any other grants apart from that related to assets. And so, once the grant is, the grant is not related to assets, then it is a grant that is related to income. So these are the two main types of grants. Grants related to assets and grants related to income. And so we are going to begin with grants related to assets. Okay, so we begin with grants related to assets. Ah, with a Grants that are related to assets, the standard IAS 20 permits two alternative treatments. 
the standard permits two alternative treatments for the grants related to assets. So when a grant, an institution or a company receives grants from the state or from government, they have two alternative ways that they can account for this grant. Now let us understand that when we say grants related to assets, we have been given the grant or we have received the resource so that we will use it to acquire an asset. So if, for example, we are going to acquire an item of plants and then government supports, okay, so let's assume that we are estimating that we are going to buy cost of the, the plants that we are going to buy is supposed to cost 50,000 Ghana cities in total. And then we receive a grant of, let's say, 20,000 from government. Now, this is a grant related to asset because the grant was given to aid us or to support the acquisition of the plant. Now, IS20 permits two alternative treatments for this grant of 20,000. And the first one is that, now, we know that this asset is supposed to be depreciated in the books for the rest of the useful life of the asset. And so, we have two ways that we can go. It's either we are going to reduce the value of the asset by the grant so that the difference will only be depreciated. And so we will just subtract the 20 from the 50 and then we will have 30,000 Ghana cities. And then when we want to do depreciation of the asset, we will depreciate this 30,000 because we have subtracted the grant. Now, another way is that we will just continue to depreciate the 50,000 originally, but this 20,000 of grant will also be transferred into deferred income accounts, and a portion will be transferred each year to offset the excess depreciation. I will take a question and try to illustrate that very well. So, what I mean is that when we want to say grants related to assets, there are two alternative treatments. So the first is that we write off the grant against the cost of the non-current assets and uh, depreciate the reduced cost. That is the first alternative treatment that we have. So we will write off the grant against the cost of the non-current assets that we have acquired. And then we depreciate the reduced cost. The second is that we treat the grant as deferred income. And transfer a portion to the income statement each year so of certain the excess depreciation. All right, so these are the two alternative treatments. One, we write off the grant against the cost of the non-current assets, and we only depreciate the reduced cost. And then second, we treat the grant as deferred income and transfer a portion to income statement each year so offsetting the excess depreciation. So these are the two basic treatments that are permitted by IES system as far as grants related to assets is concerned. And so we are going to take a question, a practical question, and then we are going to look at how these two methods will work out. Apecon Limited, Mr. Apecon Limited received a grant of 1,800 Ghana cities to acquire a plant costing 10,200 Ghana cities on 1st January 2010. The machine is to be depreciated on the straight line basis over three years. 
you are required to account for the grant using method one and two as specified by the accounting standard. All right, so we are going to solve for this question. And so we begin with method one. Method one says that we should write off the grant against the cost of the non-current assets. And then we should depreciate the reduced cost. And so the cost of the plant is 10,200. And then the grant is 1,800. And so if we have to reduce the value of this uh, plant, by the grant, then it means that in the asset account, this is how it's going to be. We are going to have 10,200 as a amount that we use to buy the asset, and then we are going to credit the asset account with the grant of 1,800 so that there will be a balance carry down of 8,400 and this is what we mean by reducing the value of the assets by the grants and so what we have done basically is that we have just subtracted 1,800 from the cost so now when we get to depreciation instead of depreciating the cost of 10,200 we are going to depreciate the 8,400, which has been reduced by the grant. And so depreciation is um, on a straight line basis over three years. And so the annual depreciation charge for this plant is going to be 8,400 over three years. And that means that we are going to have an annual depreciation charge of 2,800 every year. Okay, so that is basically what we mean. And so we are going to have an annual depreciation charge of 2,800. Now what we have done is that we bought the item of plant for 10,200. But what we know is that we should have depreciated or divided the useful life by 10,200. That is the normal depreciation that we know. But because of the grant, we have subtracted the 1,800 from 10,200 so that the reduced cost rather is depreciated. And so in the income statement, when we want to show the income statement, what we are going to do is that if this is the income statement, then each year 2,800 is going to go as depreciation expense for the three years. Okay? And so in year one, we are going to have depreciation of 2,800. In year two, we are going to have the same depreciation of 2,008. And then in the final year, the same 2,008. So that is basically what we are going to do in the income statement. And so we have the, the, the idea is just how to treat the grant. As for these ones, we know them already. As for this one, we know them already. The idea is just how to treat the grant. And so I believe we have understood that. And then we are going to prepare the provision for depreciation account with this 2,800. So that is basically what we are going to do. All right. So we are going to look at the second alternative treatment, where we are going to transfer the grant. We will keep the grant as a deferred income. And then every year, we will transfer a portion to income so that it will offset the excess depreciation this is what i mean okay okay so with the second method i want to prepare the grant account the grant account and I also want to show the machine account 
All right. So this is what basically we are going to do. With the second alternative, when we credit or we debit the grant with 10,200, the machine account with 10,200, we are not going to reduce it by the grant. And so the balance carried down in the account will still be 10,200. This is basically what we are going to do. Now, the focus with this method is really on the grant account. And so let me show how the grant account is going to be done. Now, before we even look at the grant account, let us understand that for this method, we are going to depreciate 10,200. And so, the annual depreciation charge is going to be 10,200 over three years. And that's going to give us 3,400. The annual depreciation charge is going to be 10,200 over three years, and that will give us 3,400 Ghana cities. This is the annual depreciation charge. Now, just as we have found the annual depreciation charge, we should also calculate the deferred income on grant. So we are going to also look at the income each year that will be transferred from the grant account. Now, the grant is 1,800 Ghana cities, and it should also be spread for three years. And so if the grant is also being spread for three years, then every year, 600 Ghana cities will also be taken as other income, so that it will offset. Now, what I mean by offset, excess depreciation is this. We have an annual depreciation charge of 3,004, and a grant income of 600. If you compare the two, you will see that 3,400 is more than the earlier depreciation charge that we had, which was 2,800. Now, the difference between 3,004 and the 2,008 is this 600 that is being transferred. And so if you take out 600 from the 3,400, you are going to get 2,800, which is the depreciation charge that would have been gotten if we had deducted the total grant from the cost of the asset before we depreciated. And so this account will show how this 600 will be transferred every year into the profit and loss account. And so we are going to first of all, in the year one, we are going to credit this grant as 1,800. So this one is coming from government. So we receive the cash of 1,800 in the year one. And at the end of the year one, 31st December, we are going to credit the profit and loss account with the 600 so that at the end of the same year, the balance carried down on the grant account will be 1,200. The grant account is going to look like in the first year. And so this is how we are going to keep the grant account. In the first year, we have transferred this 600 to the profit and loss account as other income. So in year two, we are going to bring the balance down. 1,200. Then at the end of the year, we are going to transfer another 600 to the profit and loss account so that we have a closing balance of 600 on the grant account. Then in year three, This balance will come and begin as balance brought forward in year three. So that at the end of the year, we transfer the same 600 to the profit and loss account. And then we close off the grant account. And so this is what we mean by treating the grant as a deferred income and transferring a portion each year into the profit and loss account so that you offset the excess depreciation on the plant. And so if you want to look at the profit and loss account extract, if this is for the income side and the debit side represents the expenses, then each year, year one, we are going to have depreciation expense 
of 3,400. And in the same year, you are going to have grant income of 600. So that the grant of 600 will offset the depreciation of 3,004. So that if you net it off, you are going to have 2,800, which we had when we, uh, what we do, we subtracted the grant from the asset cost before depreciation. And so whichever method that you use, the net effect is the same. But in this method, we show the full depreciation and then we offset it by the grant income. And so in year two, we are still going to have depreciation of 3,400. Then another grant income of 600 to offset. In year three, the same will happen, 3,400 for depreciation. And then there will be a grant income of 600. So that is how basically the profit and loss account extract is going to look like. Okay, so having done this, let us look at how the statement of financial position is going to look like. The extract of the statement of financial position. Statement of financial position extract. Now, when we get to the non current assets, okay, when we get to non current assets, in each of the years, we are going to have our cost minus accumulated depreciation and our net book value for the same item of plant. And see, for the plant in year one, the cost will be 10,200 as we saw it from the first one. There was a depreciation of 3,400, and then we have a net book value of 6,800. This is how the depreciation will be shown in the statement of financial position. And then in year two, the cost remains 10,200, but the accumulated depreciation rises to uh, 6,800. Sorry. And then we have 3,400 as the net book value. In year three, we have 10,200 as the cost. Accumulated depreciation of 10,200. And then we have nothing for the current amount. And so this is how you are going to show the statement of financial position for the second method. Now, we are not done. Let us also know that that deferred income, the grant that we treated as a deferred income, will always be a current a liability in the statement of financial position. And so, in year one, when we come to current liabilities, okay, when we get to current liability, we are going to show the grant as on earned income. And so, this deferred income will be shown. And we are going to look at the balance carried down for the grant income. And it was 1,200 in year one. So in year one. Now in year two, when you are showing it in year two, the balance carried down for year two is what you are going to bring, which is a 600, which is going to be the current liability. But in year three, we would have exhausted the use of the grant. And so there will be no liability for grant in year three. And so that is how it's going to be. That deferred income will be treated as a liability in the statement of financial position. And then the uh, depreciation will also be taken out of the cost of the plant. And that is basically how we are going to look at the method two. Thank you. Okay, so having understood that, let us try understanding the grant related to income. Now, that is no different from the grant related to assets. It's just that with the grant related to income, you are going to apportion the grant uh, on a pro rata basis according to the way the expenditure is incurred year after year. And so where we are all we are going to do is that once it is not specifically to acquire an asset but it's for a project, normally the way the costs are incurred is how you apportion it. And so for example, is so grants related to income. Okay, so for example, if you are supposed to incur expenditure of a total cost of uh, let's say uh, ten thousand Okay, and you're supposed to incur this over five years. And you receive a grant of, let's say, 6,000 to buttress that or to help you uh, 
to do that. Now, what you are going to do is that you are going to look at each year the expenditure that you incurred over the years, and then you are portioning it the same way for the grant, so that just like we did for the second method, each year's cost will be um, reduced by each year's grant that is realized in effect. Let us take a question to try and uh, understand that very well. Anson Limited received a grant of 60 million to compensate it for costs incurred in planting trees over a period of five years. Anson Limited will incur such costs in this manner. So year one, we have 2,000, year two, 4,000, year three, 6,000, year four, 8,000, and year five, 10,000. We have three zeros up to tell us that it is in millions. All right. Total cost incurred will aggregate to 30 million, whereas the grant received is 60 million. Based on the provisions of IS 20, how will Anson Limited treat the grant in its books? All right. So we have a cost to incur. The total is 30 million, but we have been told how it's going to be incurred year after year. And so, year one, we are going to incur 2,000, putting three zeros up. Then year two is 4,000. Year three is 6,000. Year four is 8,000. And then year five is 10,000. If you add up this cost, we are incurring 30,000 in all. But it is 30 million because there are three zeros up there. Then we have received a grant of 60 million, which is double of what we are incurring. It is possible that sometimes the grant you are going to receive will be more than the cost that you are incurring. And so we have received a grant of 60 million, double of this. And the question is, how is Anson Limited going to account for this grant? And so basically what we are going to do is that we are going to show that the grant is going to be treated as deferred income. That is how we treat it. And once it will be treated as a deferred income, each year a portion will be transferred as income to offset this cost that is being incurred. And so basically what we are going to do is that we are going to use a ratio to look at how the grant will be recognized. And so looking at the grant to be recognized, In year one, we are going to, the, the amount of the grant, the total amount of the grant is 60 million or 60,000 when you have the three zeros now. Now, so in year one, what we are going to do is that we are going to use a ratio. So 2,000 over the 30,000 times the value of the grant gives you the amount that is supposed to be recognized. And so in year one, we are going to have 2,000 over 30,000 times 60 million or 60,000. And that means that in year one, we are going to recognize a total grant of 4,000 cities. In year two, it is 4,000. We incurred 4,000 over the total cost of 30,000 times 60,000. And so we are going to have 8,000 as a grant to be recognized. So going by the same approach, in year three, we are going to have 12,000. In year four, we are having 16,000. And then in year five, we have 20,000. So that it will all sum up to 60,000 when you have three zeros up. Okay, so what we have done basically is that we have allocated the grant over the useful life of the project. And we have recognized it in the manner of the way, with the way we incur the cost. And so what we do is that each year, this one should be treated as expenses. And then these ones will be treated as income so that it will offset each other, just like we treated the, the previous one. And so that is basically how we are going to look at grants that are related to income. All the time, we are portioning them in the order of the way expenses are incurred. And then we try to recognize them to offset the cost. It is possible that the grant also may be lesser than the total cost in care. And so we apply the same method 
It's just that the value of the grant will be lesser in terms of offsetting than the cost that is being incurred for the year. Okay, that is it with the grants related to income. Now, there are times also that the examiner will require you to advise the company. Now, when it comes to standards, I always say that, say that we always have to think because in as much as we calculate, we also write English. And it is not advisable to solve a question on standards and not write English. And so most of the time, the requirement will be to advise. Advise how the company should treat or show how it should be treated. So you are always seen as a financial consultant. And you are supposed to advise the company on how these things are to be treated. And so let us try and look at another question where we are going to advise on how grants should be treated. And I believe that we will be fine with that. Opuni Limited received a grant of 150 million to install and run a solar energy system in, a, in an economically backward area. Opuni Limited has estimated that such a system would cost 250 million to construct. The secondary condition attached to the grant is that the entity should hire labor in the local market. That is from the economically backward area where the windmill is located, instead of employing workers from other parts of the country. It should maintain a ratio of one is to one local workers to workers from outside in its labor force for the next five years. The windmill is to be depreciated using the straight line method over a period of 10 years. Required. Advise Upuni Limited on the treatment of this grant in accordance with IAS 20. All right, so this is an advice question. You're supposed to advise the company you are a financial consultant. Now, he said you are advising in accordance with IAS 20. And so you need to bring in the provisions of the IAS 20. What does the IAS 20 say concerning grants? How it should be treated? You see, so you are not advising from your own uh, wisdom. You are advising from the laid down rules of the IS 20. And so you should mention that there are alternative treatments. Yes, if you want to get a full mark in this question, you talk about the fact that the standard has two alternative ways that they can go. So you explain each of them, how it will be done. So you talk about the first method where you subtract the 150 million from the 250 million cost. And then the, S, the difference of 100,000 will be depreciated over the 10 year period. That is the first alternative. You can also advise them to treat the 150 million as deferred income and divide it by 10 years, so that's 15,000. So if you divide 150,000, which is the grant by the 10 years, you are having 15,000 as the grant income for every year. And the cost of the item is also 250,000. If you divide by 10 years, you have 25,000 each year. And so what we are going to do is that this amount will be an expense as depreciation. And this will be grant income every year for the rest of the 10 years. And that is how you are going to advise for the second one. And then don't forget that there was a condition attached to the grant that they should maintain a one is to one worker ratio, that they should employ a local worker and they should maintain a ratio of one is to one with other workers from other parts of the country. And so this is a contingency that should be disclosed at the end of the financial statement. And so you sh it should be in your advice as part of your answer that that is a contingency that should be disclosed at the end of the financial statement. I think bringing out these points is enough to earn you, if not the full mark, 90% of the marks, you'll be fine. And so that is how we answer questions concerning government grants. Make sure you are going according to the standard. Now, in our next video, we are going to look at solving questions, more questions on grants. And I'm sure that when more questions are being solved, some of the loopholes that are left for you to get a full understanding will be sealed and you'll be fine as far as IES 20 is concerned. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and then share and comment on this video.